Hey guys, it's John here. Uh, this new tutorial series is going to cover the fundamentals of programming. And I know that there are tons of resources out there already that cover this, and I've actually directed people to uh, resources that I believe are quite decent. Uh, but for whatever reason, um, one of the most popular requests that I've ever received is can I do my own fundamental series. So after thinking about it, uh, that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Um, and what this course is going to offer is it's literally going to cover the fundamentals of C-sharp programming and we'll go through project-based examples uh, and it's going to get you comfortable so that you can self-educate yourself, continue moving forward, uh, give you an easier time on my tutorial series and then you'll be also be able to adapt what you learn here to uh, different scenarios. So the way it's going to work is with each lesson, I might be a little short because today's lesson is going to be variables, but uh, going forward with each lesson you'll have a practical um, application to use it with and basically I'll go through a couple of examples and then I'll leave you with one to complete on your own um, and we'll, we'll go through those but basically we're going to be covering um, you know what you typically find in the fundamentals we're going to do uh, variables go on to if statements arrays for loops for each loops uh, and we'll, we'll probably get into some advanced stuff as well like design patterns like the singleton manager um, we'll probably cover delegates and events at, a, at some point, uh, event actions, and lambda expressions. Uh, those last three are very advanced, but they're awesome features that are, are part of the .NET framework. So pretty much that's where we're going to go ahead and uh, that's what this series is going to be about. It's basically getting you comfortable with the fundamentals so that you can self-educate yourself and learn to program. Uh, so what we're going to be covering today are variables. So what's a variable? Variables store information. We assign values to them. A variable has three requirements with an optional fourth. Uh, in order for a variable to be valid, it must have a public or private identifier. It has to have a data type. So like for instance, what's in this variable? You can think of a variable as like a box that has information. What's assigned to that box or what's in the box? Uh, <clears throat> and it must have a name. Every variable has a name. All right? And the fourth option is to assign a value to that uh, variable. Now that's optional. All right, so the syntax for a variable goes like this. So for instance, if I wanted to create a variable for my name, which is Jonathan, um, I would need the required the three required components with an optional fourth. So I would have to have a public or private identifier. So for instance, if it's public, it means it could be changed outside the script. It can also mean I can edit it in the inspector. If it's private, only this script can access it. It's not available in the inspector, and nobody can see it. So it's a private variable that only works in the script. So I'm going to say public. Now the data type, which is the next thing, is what is in this variable? What is this variable going to hold? It's going to hold my name, which is a string of text. Okay. So the con there's four common data types you'll typically work with, and they are int, which is integer, whole values, so like 1, 2, 3, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. Uh, you have float, which is decimal numbers. Uh, which requires the suffix of f, lowercase f, at the end, and that's like a de any decimal, 5.5, 6.3, 9.7, and so forth. Um, then you have a string, which is contained in quotations, uh, and it's characters of text, things like what I'm saying now is a string. Um, hey, and, John, whatever, you know what I mean? So then you have a bool, which returns true or false. It's used for checking things like, is the player dead? It's a true or false value. All right, so using variables, we can create game logic. So if I wanted a variable for my name, it's a string of text. So I'm going to say string. And then every variable needs a name. So my name. And then I, the, I, I could leave it like this. And if I do, I can come to the inspector. And I can assign it right then and there, my name. I could put Jonathan. All right, so I could put Jonathan here. Or I can go into the script. And I could simply just say in strings and in quotations, I could say Jonathan. All right. Now, if I wanted a variable for my age, that's using an integer value, which is a whole number, right? I'm not 22.5, I'm 22. So I'm going to go ahead and say I can make it public, and actually I'm going to make it private. So I'm going to say private, <clears throat> and then int, um, we'll say my age equals 22. Now, because it's private, no other class can access this variable. Only this script can access it. And if you're not familiar really with what a class is, uh, you can think of a class as almost a blueprint for your program. It's basically what holds instructions for what your program should do. So I have a private variable, which means it only works in this class. So if I go to Unity, 
you'll notice I see my name variable here, but I don't see the my age one because it's private. So let's move on. So let's go and add a speed, uh, a float value. So for instance, let's go and say public. Uh, let's go and say usually I keep it together. So let's go and say public float speed, and say my speed is 5.5. Now if I just leave it like this, I'm going to get an error. Because it's a float, it's a decimal value, and you have to specify it with a suffix of f, just the lowercase f like that. If I didn't do that, you'll get an error, and it will just say, are you missing a suffix f at the end? All right? So you always remember your f and your semicolon at the end. All right, let's see. Now we have a bool. So a bool is like a true or false. So I'm going to go ahead and say here, we're going to say public bool. All right, bool is true or false value. And I'm going to say is cool. All right, and if I leave it at default like this, the value is false. And I can see it in the inspector as a little checkbox. If I want to, though, I can assign it. It's optional. And I can say true is cool. So these are the four common data types that you'll work with. Um, in a scenario where you'll want to decide if something's going to be public or private, you'll typically do that uh, with based on what the information is. So for instance, in a game-related scenario, if I have a variable for my health, which is going to be an int because it's a whole number, you have 100 health, not 100.5 or 99.2 health, right? Uh, so say I had public int health and then equals 100. That's going to be public because think about it, you're going to have enemies in your game and those enemies need to damage you. Well, what is damaging? Damaging is subtracting your health, right? Well, your enemies have their own class. So eventually when we get into class inheritance, they need to access this variable here, which is public, and decrement the health. Great. That's in the video. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> so basically... Uh, you want that to be public. Now, things maybe I don't want public, what would those be? Those would be things like um, the minimum health. For instance, say you had a variable, or no, here, say you had a variable for max ammo, right? So say you had a, here, so we had a variable called private int max ammo count. Max ammo count equals 100. The reason why it's private is because I don't want any other script to change the max ammo count of my weapon. If my weapon was designed to hold 30 bullets, it's going to hold 30 bullets. Nobody should be able to say that, hey, instead, let me go ahead and make it like 50 bullets. All right? One also important thing to know about variables is that they're called variables because they can vary. All right? For instance, with these public variables, right now it's 100. However, in about five minutes from now, it could be 50. So variables vary. That's how they get their name. All right? They can change. Um, for instance, I declare it my age is 22 up here. However, if I were to create the void start function, which is part of the mono behavior, and I were to say here my age equals 18, right now it's 22, but right when I start my game, it's now 18. So what you guys can do is uh, you can mess around, go ahead and create some variables if you want an exercise. Go ahead and create, um, go ahead and create three variables that describe your your ASL. So age, sex, location. And feel free to post it in the comments. Uh, if you're not um, if you're not following me on Facebook or Twitter or subscribe to DGI, I recommend you do so. You can go to digitalgaminginstitute.com to get the links. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.